Hello students, today we will see a demonstration of dialysis. Introduction. In short, dialysis is a technique that is used for removal of contaminants that can pass through the dialysis membrane by selective passive diffusion through a semi-permeable membrane called a dialysis tube. In research laboratories, the technique is used to remove small unwanted molecules such as dithiotretol beta mercaptanol, biotin, preservatives, etc. from a solution. The technique may also be employed for buffer exchange or drug binding assays. In practice, dialysis works under the principle of diffusion, where diffusion is the random, non-selective movement of molecules from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration until an equilibrium is reached. Here, differential diffusion can be attained by use of semi-permeable membrane between the two concentrations, that is, the sample and the dialysis buffer. In dialysis, use of certain pore size of dialysis membrane limits the inflow and outflow of large molecules and facilitates movement of small molecules that can pass through the membrane pore. Hence, Samples of large molecule containing contaminants of small molecules when dialyzed will contain the larger molecule inside the bag and small size contaminants will pass through the membrane. With regular chains of dialysate and time, the concentration of the contaminant will decrease from the sample solution. Since dialysis depends upon concentration difference, within and outside the dialysis bag, the efficiency of the process is determined by degree of difference among the two. If we consider volume of the inside buffer as V1 and outside buffer as V2, then we should be having large volume of V2 for efficient dialysis and changing it when equilibrium is reached. The attainable dilution of the V1 can be determined by V1 divided by sum of V1 and V2 to the power n, where n is the number of chains of buffers. As for example, if 1 ml of sample is dialyzed against a sample of 200 ml of buffer, then there will be decrease of 200 folds in concentration of the contaminants or buffer in the V1 when equilibrium is reached. We change of buffer two more times of 200 ml each, then the contaminants will be reduced by 8 into 10 to the power 6. Now let us discuss factors affecting performance of dialysis. Time required to complete the dialysis process is dependent on the factors that determines diffusion of movement of molecules such as temperature. Since molecular movement depends upon the kinetic energy, increase in temperature will have an effect on the molecular movement. Increase in temperature is directly proportional to the rate of diffusion and hence rate of dialysis. Secondly, concentration and molecular weight of the contaminant molecule. The higher the concentration, the faster the rate of diffusion, and higher the molecular weight, the slower will be the diffusion rate. Thirdly, the surface area of the membrane. Increase in surface area increases the dialyzable surface area, and hence, there will be an increase in the rate of dialysis. Another determinant is the thickness of dialysis membrane. Rate of dialysis is inversely proportional to the thickness of the membrane. In this experiment, the materials required will be 
Dialysis is a simple and straightforward process. In this experiment, we will need a protein sample, dialysis buffer which may be phosphate buffered saline, dialysis membrane with appropriate molecular weight cutoff, one liter beaker, dialysis back clip or a thread, magnetic stirrer and magnetic bead. There is no universal protocol for dialysis and may be modified to suit your application. It is dependent on the size of your sample, the size of your target molecule to be removed, type of membrane and endpoint of dialysis. The following procedure is a generalized guideline of the process. First, dialysis membranes should be prepared according to manufacturer's protocol. Glycerol present as humectant may need to be removed before dialysis. This can be achieved by washing the membrane for 3 to 4 hours with double distilled water. Sometimes, the manufacturing process results in deposition of sulfate salts on the dialysis membrane and can be removed by 0.3% wet by volume of sodium sulfate at 80 degrees centigrade for a minute followed by washing at 60 degrees centigrade with water and rinsing with 0.2% sulfuric acid. Excess acid can then be removed by washing with clean water. Next, load the sample into the dialysis tubing and tie the ends with a cotton thread or use special clips for dialysis bags followed by dialysis for two hours. You can perform this step at room temperature or at 4 degrees centigrade. In the next step, change the dialysis buffer and dialyze for another 2 hours. In the next step, you can change the dialysis buffer again and dialyze overnight at 4 degrees centigrade. In the results, after desired change of buffers at appropriate time intervals as determined by the concentration of the sample, equilibrium of the dialysis buffer can be achieved. Further, for analysis of purity of your sample, different other techniques can be employed such as SDS page, HPLC or spectrophotometric analysis. In conclusion, we have learned that dialysis is a procedure that depends upon the concentration of the sample and dialysis buffer as the principle is based on diffusion limited by a semi-permeable membrane of definite molecular cutoff. Dialysis is a simple process that removes small molecule contaminants and residual salts present in the samples that can interfere with the downstream processes. Thank you.